Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, then you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon. Start another video which comes up that can be helpful for you. You can be notified about the same. You can also join our telegram group. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions which we are taking, then you can get the access to those free PDFs through telegram group only. Moving on to question number one now, which says, RBI has recently come up with master directions on PPIs. PPIs means the prepaid payment instruments. Which of the following correctly defines PPIs? So in today's session, we will be covering the master directions on PPIs which RBI has recently released. This entire session will be dedicated to this very topic only. All the four questions today are related to these master directions. So please pay kind attention to the discussion of master directions. Then only you will be able to answer these questions. So talking about what are prepaid payment instruments, how does RBI defines them? So as the name suggests, they are prepaid payment instruments. Okay. So you have already made the payment for, you have already uh, prepaid for them and you can utilize them for making the payments of different goods and services. So you have some kind of a say debit card, credit card, you have some wallet, okay, or you have some gift card and you can use that to buy different goods and services. You have already made the payment for the same and using that very instrument, you can easily purchase the goods and services. This is how RBI defines the PPIs. PPIs are the instruments which facilitate the purchase of goods and service including your financial service, your remittance facilities etc against the value stored therein. So, you have a debit card, okay? Uske against your bank account mein already paisa hai. So, you can use that card use karke alag -alag goods, karit sakte ho, alag -alag services avail kar sakte ho. So, how can you do this? Because the instrument has already value deposited which you can do these payments. So, this is a prepaid payment instrument. Okay, you have e-wallets, metro cards, all of these are in your prepaid payment instruments. So, the answer to this question is option D. Now, instead of discussing the second question, let's first discuss the entire set of master directions and then we'll cover the remaining three questions in the end. Okay. So let's get started with these master directions. RBI says that the banks as well as the non-bank entities, if they want to issue these prepaid payment instruments, then they need the approval or authorization from RBI for the same. Without the approval from RBI, no entity can operate the prepaid systems, uh, operate the uh, basically issue the prepaid payment instruments. If you have to prepaid payment instrument issue karne hai, to uske liye RBI ki permission Hai. So this is the definition which we discussed in the first question that they are the instruments facilitating purchase of goods services including your financial service remittance facilities against value stored therein. So let's discuss these master directions which RBI has come up with. First it talks about applicability. So these directions are applicable for all prepaid payment issuers and the system participants. Jitni bhi companies hai, banks hai, jo ye PPIs issue karti hai, un sab ko ye directions applicable hai. Talking about the very purpose of these directions, so they are going to provide a framework for authorization, regulation and supervision of the PPI issuers in the country. So jo bhi companies hai, banks hai, jo PPIs issue karti hai, unko ye approval dena, ye authorization dena ki wo PPI issue kar sakti hai, unke rules, regulations banana, make sure karna ki wo rules, regulations follow ho rahe hai, un entities ko supervise karna, ye sab ma in master directions ke purview ke under aayega. Then another purpose is to foster competition, encourage innovation in this very segment by focusing on safety, security of the systems and customer protection and convenience. So this set of master directions talks about how the risks will be managed, how the customer protection needs to be ensured, what grievance redressal mechanism should be followed. So safety, security, customer protection ko make sure karke uske liye directions bana ke ye master directions is very segment mein, PPI segment mein aur competition aur innovation encourage karti hai. 
and it also provides for harmonization and interoperability of PPI. So, the mechanism facilitates that the PPIs in ke aapas mein exchanges ho sake um, they, there can be a, an interconnectivity between the de, between them wo sab bhi in directions ke through assure hoga so talking about the eligibility requirements kya eligibility requirements hain banks ke liye non banks ke liye ki wo ppis issue kar sakenge so if i talk about the banks they need to comply with the eligibility criteria which rbi specifies and they need the approval from their regulatory department okay and uh, they further require the approval from rbi so aapke specific regulatory department ke jo rules regulations hain jo eligibility criteria hai usko follow karne ke saath saath banks ko rbi ka approval chahiye so banks who are seeking the approval from rbi need to obtain that approval by applying for the same to the Department of Payment and Settlement System. So, Department of Payment and Settlement System, which is central office in Mumbai, they need to apply for RBI approval for PPIS issue. And uh, you also need no objection certificate from the regulatory department within 30 days of obtaining such clearance. All right. Moving ahead to the criteria of non-banks. So non-banks also won't have to follow similar criteria that they need the permission from RBI which they can seek from the Department of uh, Payment and Settlement System whose central office is in Mumbai and along with that you need a no objection certificate from your respective regulator. So is ke alawa kya requirements hai non-banks ki other than that non-banks have certain more requirements like they need to be a company incorporated in India under the Companies Act. Then uh, the memorandum of association, which is a very very important document for your company, it needs to mention that the company is eligible to issue PPIs. All right. Then all non-bank entities which want an authorization from RBI, who want an authorization from RBI, they need to have a minimum net worth of five crores as per the latest audited balance sheet. So, 5 crore aapki net worth honi chahiye aur ye net worth aane wale 3 financial years mein jaake 15 crore honi chahiye. By the end of third financial year uh, of receiving this authorization, final authorization, they shall achieve a minimum positive net worth of 15 crore. Alright, so this is the eligibility criteria for non-banks. Now, talking about how these non-banks can get the authorization. So for that, they need to apply in form A in the R on the RBI's website. All right. The application will be screened by RBI. RBI will make sure that the uh, this very non-bank entity efficiently provides the customer service. It will check the technicalities, the related requirements of this very entity, what measures the entity is taking for safety, for security. And after checking all these things, an in-principle approval will be given. Then that non-bank needs to provide a system audit report, the net worth certificate. It needs to prove that it is exercising due diligence and after that it will be granted the final authorization. So RBI will sab check karega ki jo bhi ye non-bank hai, ye customer ko kaisi service provide kar raha hai, kitna efficient hai, kya technical aspects pe focus kar raha hai, kya related requirements hai jinne ye fulfill kar raha hai, kya safety or security measures opt kar raha hai. उसके बाद RBI उस मेरी नॉन बैंक को एक इन प्रिंसिपल अप्रूवल देगा उसके बाद उस एंटिटी को कुछ डॉक्यूमेंट्स जमा करने होते हैं जैसे कि नेट वर्थ सर्टिफिकेट है सिस्टम ऑडिट रिपोर्ट है ये प्रूव करना होता है कि वो प्रॉपर ड्यू डिलीजेंस एक्सरसाइज कर रहे हैं और उसके बाद ही RBI फाइनल सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ ऑथराइजेशन इशू करता है इन नॉन बैंक्स को PPI इश्यूअर्ड होने का दिस इज द प्रोसेस ऑलराइट नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट अ रियली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ दीस मास्टर डायरेक्शंस the types of PPIs. So, many times there was a question in interviews that what are the types of prepaid instruments, what are the different types of PPIs. This is a very important topic. है. So, previously, if we talk about the previous master directions we had, it classified PPIs into three categories, closed, semi-closed and open PPIs. So, when we were discussing the first time, we said that there are open PPIs, there are closed and there are semi-closed. अब जो ये नए डायरेक्शंस आए हैं इन्होंने इस थ्री टाइप क्लासिफिकेशन को हटा के टू टाइप क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ पीपीआईज पे फोकस किया है स्मॉल पीपीआईज और फुल केवाईसी पीपीआईज सो ये अब न्यू क्लासिफिकेशन है इस मास्टर डायरेक्शंस के अकॉर्डिंग सो लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्मॉल पीपीआईज एंड द 
full KYC PPIs. The PPIs are issued, the small PPIs are issued by banks as well as your non-banks after obtaining minimum details of prepaid uh, payment PPI holder. So, whatever prepaid payment instrument ka holder is, you minimum details of the instrument in small PPIs. Mein. Basic unka mobile number, unki identification proof, that's it. But if I talk about full KYC PPIs, then you carry out the complete KYC procedure, uh, video process to hai pura, uske through unki complete details lete ho, know your customer ki sari requirements fulfill karke, sari details leke, fir hi aap PPIs issue karte ho. Then if I talk about small as well as full KYC PPIs, both can be used for purchasing goods and services. Dono ka hi aap use karke, Goods खरीद सकते हो, services avail कर सकते हो. लेकिन जब बात आती है fund transfer करने की, cash withdrawal करने की, तो वो आप small PPIs के through नहीं कर सकते. सिर्फ full KYC PPIs के through कर सकते हो. So you can use small PPIs for goods and services purchasing, but you can't use them for transferring the funds or cash withdrawal. Whereas full KYC PPIs can be used for both the purpose, that is purchasing goods and services as well as fund transfer or cash withdrawal. Then uh, talking about the outstanding amount, in small PPIs, the outstanding amount allowed is up to 10,000 per month, 1.2 lakh per year and for full KYC PPIs, it is 2 lakh. Okay, earlier it was 1 lakh outstanding amount you can have. Now coming, uh, discussing a bit more about them. So your small PPIs are those which require minimum details. So we can have with cash loading facility and without cash loading facility, small PPIs. So just me up cash ki through paisa load kar sakte ho or just me up cash na ho ke through na ho ke. Dusre mechanisms ka follow kar ke bank transfers vagera ke through ka, uh, amount load kar sakte ho. So is me up ke kya kya chize a jati hai. Banks and non-banks are permitted to issue such PPIs where minimum details will be taken like a mobile number which will be verified through OTP and a self-declaration of name, unique identity number of a mandatory document or officially valid document. These PPIs, hai, these PPIs will be reloadable in nature. In mein aap dobara paise load kar sakte ho and they will be issued in electronic form only. And the amount loaded in such PPIs will not exceed 10,000 and uh, during a year 1,20,000. So monthly is me das hazar se chada paisa exceed nahi hona chahiye jo aap load karte ho. Then total amount which you can debit from them shall also not exceed 10,000 per month. Now these PPIs as I've already discussed can be used for purchasing goods and services but not for cash withdrawal or transfer of funds. These PPIs need to be converted into full KYC PPIs within 24 months. Agar aap aisa nahi kar sakte to aap isme koi further credit nahi kar paoge. Okay, however, if you are having some balance in such PPI, you can use that. Moving ahead to small PPIs with no cash loading facility. So, for that also, both banks, non-banks can issue them with minimum details of the PPI holder. And uh, they will be reloadable in nature. Issued can be issued in card form or in electronic form. And you can load, reload the money in them using your bank account, your credit card, your full KYC PPI. Okay. Now, the amount shall not exceed 10,000 per month, 1,20,000 per year and these PPIs also be used only for purchasing goods and services, not for fund transfer and all. Now, talking about the second category that is of full KYC PPI, so banks or non-banks dono hi ne issue kar sakte hai jab wo PPI holder ki complete KYC procedure follow kar lenge. With full KYC, banks and non-banks can issue these. The video based customer identification process can be followed for uh, opening full KYC PPI or for converting small PPI to full KYC PPI. Okay, they are also reloadable in nature and they can be issued in electronic form only. Jesse aapke Paytm wallets hai agar aap unme proper KYC ke through linking karke aap electronically uh, wo issue hote hai to unhe hum full KYC PPI mein categorize kar sakte hai. The amount outstanding shall not exceed 2 lakh at any point of time. These funds can be transferred back to the source account. Okay. And the PPI issuer need to provide a pre-registered list of the beneficiaries. And if there is a list provided to these beneficiaries that they can be, uh, the payments can be facilitated to them, then the, they will be providing the bank details of these beneficiaries and the transfer limit in such case allowed is 2 lakh but in other cases the transfer 
fund transfer limit is 10,000 per month. And these PPI issuers clearly indicate these limits to PPI holders and provide options to holders to set their own fund transfer limits. All right. Then in case of bank issued PPIs, cash withdrawal is permitted. This is an highlighting feature that you can withdraw through cash withdraw which you didn't get in small PPI. Mein option nahi mil raha tha. However, cash withdrawal at the point of devices shall be subject to 2000 per transaction with overall monthly limit of 10,000 across all locations, okay. And in case of a non-bank issued PPI, the cash withdrawal is 2,000 per transaction, monthly limit 10,000 per PPI across all channels, be it your ATMs, POS devices, agents, okay. Now moving ahead to the specific categories of PPIs, though all specific categories are PPI ki gift or mass transit PPIs. Gift PPIs kya hote hai? They are also a kind of a prepaid payment instrument where the maximum value shall not exceed 10,000. Koi gift card aapko issue kar diya gaya jis mein value hai say 100 rupees ki, 1000 rupees ki aap usko use kar sakte ho goods kareedne ke liye, service avail karne ke liye. Okay, in mein aap phir, is instrument mein aap phir se paisa load nahi kar sakte. They are not reloadable. Cash out or fund transfer is not permitted. However, uh, if some uh, from some account this gift PPI has been provided the money then the money can be transferred back to the source okay now then there are mass transit systems as well the ppis for mass transit system jo cheeze aapka transit facilitate karti hai railways ho gaye metro ho gayi so in se related bhi aapko prepaid payment instruments issue kiye ja sakte hain jaise ki metro card okay the ppis shall be issued by the mass transit systems after authorization to issue ppi under the payment and settlement systems act such PPIs shall obtain a contain a automatic automated fare collection application to transit service. They are reloadable in nature. You metro card ko pay recharge kar sakte ho. Maximum value shall not exceed three thousand at a point of time. Cash out refund or funds transfer is not permitted. Aapne suppose five hundred rupees ka metro card banvaya. Chhe ke five hundred rupees isme aa gaye. Ab aap is five hundred rupees ko jab bhi aap travel karte ho, ne use kar sakte ho. Lekin isme इसके इस 500 रुपए को आप रिफंड नहीं कर सकते इससे पैसा कहीं और ट्रांसफर नहीं कर सकते ऑलराइट टॉकिंग अबाउट इंटरऑपरेबिलिटी नाउ सो इट्स द टेक्निकल कंपैटिबिलिटी व्हिच इनेबल्स अ पेमेंट सिस्टम टू बी यूज्ड इन कंजंक्शन विद अदर पेमेंट सिस्टम जो आपस में पेमेंट सिस्टम्स की लिंकेज होती है उस टेक्निकल कंपैटिबिलिटी को हम इंटरऑपरेबिलिटी कहते हैं सो पीपीआई इशुअर वर डायरेक्टेड दैट दे हैव टू अचीव दिस इंटरऑपरेबिलिटी हाउ कैन द पीपीआई ensure the interoperability if they are in the form of wallets then through upi the interoperability is possible ki upi ki through either se other paisa transfer ho jayega if it is in the form of cards then the card networks will provide the interoperability this interoperability is mandatory for your kyc compliant ppis and should be operational by next year okay qr codes should be there which will ensure interoperability by next year and for gift ppis uh, they have to offer interoperability, but the mass transit system shall remain exempted from interoperability. Now, moving ahead to validity and redemption. So, this is an here two points are important. One is that all PPI issued in the country should have a minimum validity of one year. Ek saal ki minimum validity honi chahiye jab aapne usme paisa load kiya, reload kiya. Isse zada bhi validity ho sakti hai, but minimum one year ki validity honi chahiye. If you are not using this card for a period of one year, okay, uh, not only card of instrument for one year, that means you are inactive. So you will be made inactive and PPI issuer uh, can do so after giving you a notice. Aap ek saal tak se paisa use nahi kar rahe, us instrument ko use nahi kar rahe. Then uh, the PPI can be issued in the form of card. The customer has the option to seek the replacement of the card. The PPI holders shall be permitted to redeem the outstanding balance if for any reason that scheme is wound up or directed by RBI to be discontinued. Now, there is an e-wallet. Suppose RBI is discontinued, then if you have money in it, you can withdraw it from it. Talking about transaction limits, so PPI holder is allowed to use PPI for purpose within overall limit applicable. So, we discussed the overall limits. How much outstanding amount should be? On that basis, you can follow the transaction limits. Follow the limits. 
PPI issuer can decide on the limits considering risk perception of holders as per the risk management policy as well. Now moving ahead to handling refunds. So if there is some payment from transaction which has failed, returned, rejected, cancelled, then the refund should be made by, uh, to the PPI immediately and the PPI issuer need to keep a track of such transactions for uh, and whenever, so that they can be presented whenever required. All right. Then the PPI issuers also need to take some steps to ensure the security, fraud prevention and risk management. So security ke liye risk management ke liye kya framework in PPI issuers ko follow karna hota hai, wo discuss kar lete hai. A strong risk management system is needed to meet challenges of fraud and ensure customer protection. Customer protection ensure karne ke liye frauds ke saath deal karne ke liye strong risk management system device karna hoga in PPI issuers ko or usko properly operate karna hoga. PPI issuers need to make sure that they have adequate information and data security infrastructure for preventing and detecting the frauds. So customers ki jo bhi data hai, usko secure rakhne ka infrastructure hona chahiye, cyber crime se protect karna, frauds agar hote hai, unhe detect karna, usko prevent karna, aisa aapko infrastructure apna develop karna hai. The security measures with these, which these PPI issuers are taking, they should Basically, review them at least once a year. They should review them whenever a breach is happening. They should review them when they are, whenever they are changing an infrastructure. All right. Then the PPI issuer needs to establish a mechanism to monitor, to handle, to follow up the cybersecurity incidents, incidents and cybersecurity breaches. So cybersecurity breaches ho rahe hai, to usko handle karne ke liye aapka strong infrastructure hona chahiye. Aapko time to time hone monitor karna hai, taaki koi cybersecurity breach na ho, aapki uh, jo bhi information hai, wo protected rahe. Moving ahead to the last section of this very direction, customer protection and grievance redressal framework. It's very important to ensure customer protection and offer them a framework for handling their grievances. So, ye master directions kya mechanism pe focus rakhti hai jisse ki customer protected rahe aur uski jo bhi grievances hai wo redress ho jaye. So, first is that the PPI issuer need to disclose all important terms and conditions in clear simple language to the holders while issuing instruments. So, jab bhi aap PPIs issue karte ho, customer ko uske terms and conditions saaf saaf easy bhaasha mein samjhao. English, Hindi ya unki jo bhi local language hai, koi information nahi chupani, kya charges lagenge us instrument ke through use karne ke, kya fees hogi, kya expiry period hai, kya terms conditions hai, sub clearly disclose karna, to abhi aapke customer protected, uh, customer ki protection assure hogi, so all charges, fees, expiry period terms conditions should be uh, disclosed to the customers, then PPI issuer shall put in place formal publicly disclosed customer grievances redressal framework. Customers ki grievances redress karne ke liye jo bhi aapka mechanism aap follow kar rahe ho, usko clearly publicly disclose karo. You need to appoint a nodal officer who will be handling the customer complaints. PPI issuer need to create sufficient awareness and educate the customers in secure use of PPI, keeping passwords confidential, procedure to follow in case of loss, theft, um, of the card or any kind of fraud. So you need to educate the customers on how, how to use these PPIs, how to keep your password safe, keep your information confidential, what procedure you will you follow if your card or if your if your card, if it, the PPI is in the form of a card, if it is stolen, if you lost it or if there is some kind of a fraud which is happening. So how you can handle that, how the things can be redressed or you should make customers aware about the same. PPI issuer needs to provide an option to the PPI holders to review account statements for at least for a receive account statements for at least past six months. Then the PPI issuer needs to be responsible to address all customer service aspects related to the PPI. So ye pura process hai customer protection or grievance redressal framework ka. These were the complete master directions. Now let's move ahead to the questions. So the second question says, identify the statements correctly related to master directions on prepaid payment instruments issued by RBI. So first one says, no entity can set up a PPI uh, without approval of RBI. This is correct. Second one says, provisions of uh, these directions will be applicable to PPI issuers and system participants. Applicability says this point. So this is correct. Third one says, banks need to seek approval from RBI shall apply for the same with NPCI and no with the Department of Payment and Settlement System. So this is incorrect. So the correct are first and second. So answer is option B. 
we already discussed that it uh, you have to apply for these on the with the department of payment and settlement system here we covered this point now moving ahead to third question which says master directions on ppi 2021 replaces the existing master directions on issuance and operation of prepaid payment instruments as per the master directions the new master directions ppis require rbi approval and are classified into two types so which of the following correctly mentions those two types abhi hi humne discuss kiya ki pehle closed semi closed and open ppis hote the ab is new classification is new uh, master directions ke according small ppis hain aur full kyc ppis hain so answer is option a moving on to last question now which of the following is incorrect please keep it in mind that you have to identify the incorrect statement with respect to validity and redemption of ppis as per latest master directions of rbi on ppi so abhi humne validity aur redemption ke bare mein discuss kiya tha so ek bar statements dekh lete hain all ppis issued in the country will have a minimum validity period of 10 years no it was 1 year so this is incorrect second one says ppis with no financial transaction for 10 years will be made inactive after issuing a notice no it was 1 year so this is also incorrect third one says ppi issued in country will have a minimum validity of 1 year this is correct fourth one says ppi with no financial transaction for 5 years will be made inactive no it was 1 year so this is again incorrect incorrect ones are first second and fourth that why answer is option c so this is the key to the answers okay so this was all for today i hope you found the session to be useful with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much